Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. neighborhood. We gather today as God's people on a glorious day uh, where we get to celebrate the confirmation of a young woman, Elia Sofia Goriali, and we look forward to that time that will come. Uh, there will be a little bit of the service today uh, during this virtual worship, and then there will be worship part two in which we will get to actually see Elia face to face and welcome her into the life of the church. Uh, you will hear from Elia and from Anna, her mother, and a little bit from me this morning about confirmation and what it is. Um, and so we welcome you to this service. We are Trinity United Church of Christ in Brookfield. And when we return, or if you'd like to come and join us today out in the parking lot, uh, you're more than welcome. We'll have a service that starts there at 1130. Bring your chairs, uh, bring your mask, and it's a short service of about 15 minutes. And it will uh, fill your heart with some spirit and joy. Uh, and we'd love to see you. So. I bring you grace and peace from God our Creator and from our Master and Teacher Jesus Christ and from the Holy Spirit who binds us together in unity and love. Come, let us worship God. Please join me for the call to worship. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or like the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord and on God's law they meditate day and night. There are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruits in its seasons, 
and their leaves do not weather, and all that they do, they prosper. Be thou my vision, O God of my heart, nothing surpasses the love you impart. Sleeping, your presence, my life. Be now my wisdom and be my true word. Ever within me, my soul is assured. Mother and father, you both do. So pray. It is not easy to trust, O oh God. People fail us, and even when we turn to you, things do not always work out as we hope they will. We are left disappointed and vulnerable, but we know that without trusting in something, we are left vulnerable and disappointed as well. So teach us to trust in you. Teach us to listen to the voices of those who are like trees planted by streams of water. Offer their gifts and their wisdom. Amen. Today's Hebrew lesson comes from Proverbs 2 verses 1 through 10. My child, if you accept my words and treasure upon my commandments within you, making your ear tentative to wisdom and including your heart to understanding. If you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand that the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk, bless, bless me, guarding the paths of justice and persevering the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and adjust and equally every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart, and the knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Come to the waves, come to the wind, Jesus whispers, peace be still, come to our hearts, fears at end. In stillness hear his voice Come to the waves, come to the wind Jesus whispers, peace be still Come to our hearts, fears at an end In stillness hear
Today's gospel lesson comes from John chapter 7, verses 37 through 44. On the last day of the festival, the great day while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture he has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow river of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, This is really the prophet. Others says, This is the Messiah. But some asked, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. About a year ago, we baptized Elia into the body of Christ at Trinity. And today she takes the next step as she confirms or gives a witness to her own faith, the faith that is growing within her. Confirmation is about belief. I believe can mean at least two things, I think. Belief can be a kind of assent or agreement to a set of statements, typically around religious beliefs. Many people give assent to certain religious beliefs, dogmas, tenets, and ways in which to live. I call this intellectual assent. Many people, even in churches, are in this kind of state of belief. But another way to think about beliefs is in terms of a relationship, a growing closeness of trust. At the core of any healthy relationship, there must be trust. So belief can also be described as faith or trust. As we begin our Christian walk, we open ourselves to being in a relationship with God. Today, Elia is giving her testimony to her desire to begin to deepen her trust in God's love and God's word as she walks in God's way. We are invited into a relationship with Jesus. We are invited to get to know him through the words of faith. And when we invite him, uh, 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 open ourselves to this relationship of belief um, and trust, the scripture tells us the spirit uh, arrives in our life during that time and begins its particular work. We are invited to learn what Jesus believes through his teaching and his word. We are invited to follow him and learn how to be a disciple. We are invited to pray in his name so that we can develop a prayer conversation with God. We believe that God who already knows us completely uh, wants to know us to know God better as our creator and our redeemer. We believe that God wants to make of us a new creation, a creation that is living now by the life of the spirit within us. We believe that God is doing that work, bringing it to completion in us even now. There's a great story about Jesus driving with us in a car or riding on a tandem bike as we begin the journey, we are firmly entrenched in the driver's seat or the front seat. We want to direct where we will go and how fast we will get there. We want to be in control. Trust isn't easy. It isn't easy to believe that anyone cares about us as much as we do. That's where Adam and Eve got caught. It sounded better to trust their own wisdom than God's. And so it is for us. But at some point we realize that our own plans often lead us to dead ends, to things that are not about abundant life 
and we slowly begin turning some of our control over to Jesus. What would you do now, Jesus? How would you handle this situation? Which direction do you think is the best? Which choice is going to honor God today, Jesus? These are the questions we begin to ask as belief deepens. And someday we may even be willing to hand over the driving to God just as Jesus did with his life. This is the journey that Elia is saying yes to today. In God's hands, she will become God's light to the world. She will be a yeast that stirs up and unsettles. She will be love to those who are unlovable and hope to those who live in despair. It seems like such an overwhelming call to be light in the midst of the darkness. And it is. But we read in Philippians that God is in us and will bring us to that completion, the work begun in us, begun at this time in Elia. We give thanks to God for this promise and this hope. As Elia steps out on this journey, the seeds of her faith are small. We are admonished in the church to make sure that nothing we do as a community of faith causes her to lose her faith or to put out that flicker of light within her. Our actions, our modeling, our own faith stories and witness become the light that guides her path, her actions, her trust. How we live and how we grow matters. It matters to God and it matters to Elia. The scriptures today speak of how we will know these people who have learned to trust God. They will be like trees bearing good fruit. They will be like a fountain pouring out living water. Does your life give a witness like this that Elia can see and hear and feel? It can, by God's grace. So today, Elia, we bless you. We hold you in our hopes and our prayers. We hold you in our loving embrace and promise you that we will do our best to live into God's high hope for us as well. Amen. When I first started coming to church with my family, I remember not really understanding God and I remember thinking, what am I doing here? but I felt an interest towards finding out who God was for me after I started listening during church. So I started my confirmation classes and my journey to find out who God is for me. Now, I think my problem was when I first started looking for God was that I thought God could almost be put in a box and that he was one thing for everyone and that everyone kind of had to mold themselves for God. But working with Pastor Susan, I started to understand that God is more than that. God is for me who he is for me, but that night might not be the same way he is for you. What I mean by this is that God loves us no matter what and no matter who we are. When I started to see that, I could start to accept Jesus Christ as my savior. I still have so far to go on my journey to find out what that means in my life, but to be confirmed today shows me that I'm on my path and I couldn't be happier with it. I'd like to say how delighted I am that Elia has chosen to explore the Christian faith. I'm grateful for each person who contributed their time to guide her along her way. I'm proud of the effort and time she's put into her classes, and I've been excited to hear her excitement about what she's learning. Elia has become a child of God through her prayer to receive Christ as her Savior. She is now his, and he will hold her in his hand for all of her life. It's amazing as a parent to watch my child taking in the foundational truths that have sustained me in my life. I know they will serve her well. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians chapter 1, writes of how he prays with joy because of his partnership or fellowship with the Philippians. And he goes on to say in verse 6, that being confident of this, he that began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. This is a verse that I'm sure many parents know and lean on. I know I do. 
as I watch all my children grow and as I think about the many ways I failed as a parent um, or have been the complete opposite of an example of Christ to them, for sure, that is the verse that encourages me because it means that I am not alone. I'm still under construction, and so are they. If I ever do anything right, it is because of the faith that I have in Christ alone. My kids may not know this, but they have more than just me watching out for them as they grow up and live out this life. They are known and loved by a perfect heavenly father who does not fail, and they have all they could ever spiritually need in the example of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will show himself to each of them. I'd like to finish by asking my Elia Sophia to remember three things. Number one, you're in this for the long haul. You're in this relationship with God no matter what, where you go or even how hard you try to push God away at times. He will never leave you. Number two, this is a two-way street. He will show himself to you if you take the time to be quiet and listen. He wants you to become who you are supposed to be, and that takes time. And finally, when you get that feeling that you're a little or even a lot off track, be brave and take a second and ask God to help you, because he will. He is always with you. He loves you, and I love you, and I'm very proud of you. Today, as Elia confirms her faith, I ask you to share uh, in affirming your faith. We will respond to three questions. Do you believe in God, the creator and redeemer of this world? If so, please respond from where you are. I believe in God, the creator and redeemer of the world. And do you believe in Jesus as your master and teacher? If so, please respond. I do believe in Jesus as my master and teacher. Do you believe in the power of the Holy Spirit at work in you? If so, please respond. I do believe in the power of the Holy Spirit at work in me. May God bless us as we affirm our faith and continue to deepen our trust in God. Amen. For our time of prayer this morning, I invite you to join with me in the confirmation prayer, and then we will share together in the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, who in baptism received this your child into the church, forgave her sins and promised her eternal life, Increase in Elia the gifts of your spirit. Grant us love for others, joy in serving you, peace in disagreement, patience in suffering, kindness towards other, goodness in evil times, faithfulness in temptation, gentleness in the face of opposition, self-control in all things. Strengthen us for the ministry to which you have called us all, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let us pray together the, the words that Jesus gave, gave his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Next week in our life and ministry, we will be gathering out on the parking lot again and hopefully having some more good weather. Uh, we will be receiving new members on that uh, Sunday the 27th and uh, introducing some of the other members or some of the other folks that have been uh, joining us regularly. So uh, I look forward to having that time together as a congregation and um, building up the body of Christ yet again in another way. 
So uh, that will happen at 1130 right after the virtual worship is through and you arrive at the church and park in the parking lot and we'll set up chairs and masks and be ready to go. Uh, during that time, you are invited to bring clothes. Uh, if you have clothing um, that will go to Hope Center uh, and you can bring clothes, coats, um, shoes, anything, and the mission team will be there and ready to help um, pick those up for you and put them in their cars and, and get them delivered. So we thank them for the very many ministries that they have been about trying to help us continue to support people who are really hurting uh, in such a variety of ways. And of course, as you know, we think about uh, that in our life and ministry, I'd invite us to make sure that we also keep our hearts open to all that is happening in the world around us and uh, lifting up prayers for those who are um, struggling through hurricane aftermaths and in the midst of wildfires and in the midst of the pandemic, we continue to hold one another in prayer. So uh, we continue to look for ways to be the church, uh, even though we are not in our sanctuary. And uh, I'm excited about the many ways in which we creatively are finding ways to be the church. So come and join us, come and be a part of our fellowship. We'd love to meet you or to see you. As always, uh, we send our thanks to you who continue to support our mission and ministry here at Trinity. Uh, as you know, there are staff that continue to need to be paid and there are uh, still utilities and, and many other things that are happening at the church that still uh, require uh, financial support. So we are so grateful for all that you continue to do in the many ways that you continue to lift up this church in your prayers, the ways you continue to find ways to share gifts with others who are in need. Uh, you make this a great church to be a part of, and we are grateful. So let us join together in the prayer of dedication. We thank you, O Holy One, for your guidance and protection during these days. We give thanks for the gifts you have planted within us and commit ourselves to use our gifts to make a difference, to bring abundant life and love to the world that you so love. Let us off, let our offerings be a blessing to others. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on the servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work right things.
through the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around who is turning the world around and now a blessing for the road May we continue to grow in our faith and belief and trust. And may we deepen our understanding of God's word, especially the word that is Jesus. And may our lives be filled with the Holy Spirit that we may always walk on God's path with the companions that God has given us, one another. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Got a glimpse of your splendor in the corner of my most beautiful thing I ever seen And it was like a flash of lightning Reflecting off the sky And I know I'll never be the same Show me your glory your glory, Show me your glory Send down your presence I want to see your face Show me your glory, show me your glory, show me your glory. Majesty shines about you. I cannot go without you, Lord. When I climb down the mountain and I get back to my life, I won't settle for. Fire.